Welcome back. I hope you like the Pulse Building mini documentary. In this lecture I will explain some more of the energy measures taken in Pulse. As you've heard, Pulse is meant as an educational building to be used by all staff and students of TU Delft. It should give place to various forms of education, old and especially new. As you've understood, the building layout was an important aspect of the sustainable design. Here you see a plan of the second floor. If you look well, you see the educational spaces on the right, which is the northeast side of the building. Since these spaces are used by large groups and for longer times, it was good, next to giving them daylight, to put them at a relatively cool orientation. On the other side, we see traffic space and open workspaces for students, where they will only move and sit infrequently. Therefore, daylight is desired, but a bit of sunshine also does not matter. In the middle, we find utility spaces, such as lifts, stairs, bathrooms, technical plant rooms and also large lecture halls, which require mechanical air treatment anyway and for which too much daylight is not desirable. Part of what I told you can also be seen in this perpendicular section, from northeast to the left to southwest to the right. Left at the top are the educational spaces I mentioned. Note that most public functions, also for an audience that does not come to Pulse for education, including catering facilities, can be found at the ground floor, adjacent to the square on the north side. Catering is locally climatized so that it does not disturb the educational activities. Here you see a photo of the open space on the west side of the building. And these are the open, relaxed places to sit and work next to the west facade. At the time this picture was taken, they were not there yet, but here you see that the facade has had shading screens installed to avoid overheating. And this is a north facade, where daylight is benign and which receives no direct sunlight, which makes, which makes it suited to do all sorts of graphical work. And the view is lovely, of course. One of the nicest places in the Pulse building is this large open space, which is meant for various kinds of activities, lectures, presentations and debates. You can also see the space in this section, here on the north side of the building. And very important are these daylight catches, which are also the bearers of solar panels on the roof. You can see them here from within the building. They may not seem to have large windows, but since they are positioned on the roof, they capture a lot of daylight from the sky, as was explained in week two of the course. The next animation demonstrates how this shaded roof works. This is a nice drone shot of the roof of Pulse. Let's look at a cross section. The sheds have PV panels to the south and these produce all renewable electricity the building needs. And from the north, they will capture daylight. Very simple. These are some pictures when we were doing the film shooting. By the way, on an unusually hot October afternoon. As you can see, the number of panels is quite impressive. As explained in the documentary, Pulse has an aquifer thermal energy storage, a heat and cold storage in the underground, connected to a heat pump system. Since last week, you know how this works, but I will explain it to you in a, with a small sketch. Here you see a cross section of the Pulse building and a part of the underground. The aquifer we are talking about is a sand layer in between clay layers, which carries water. In summertime, Cold water is extracted from the cold well in this aquifer. It goes through a heat exchanger, the building is cooled by it via the underfloor system and remaining warm water is pumped into the warm well. In wintertime, warm water from summer is extracted from the warm well. It passes the heat exchanger, a heat pump boosts the temperature to the desired level and warm water runs through the underfloor heating to heat the building. Cold remaining water goes into the cold well. This basically sums up the main energy system. There are many more details I could tell, but for now it suffices to say that the Pulse building also uses direct current for its lighting and some USB connections for phones and computers. And furthermore, the building has a green inner wall and acoustical meshes were also taken, for instance, by these hanging bevels. So, 
You may imagine, I may imagine that you consider this building rather complicated, but I hope it has become clear enough to understand how it was made energy neutral. More information will be provided online. For now, I want to thank you for your attention and wish you good luck with the next lecture on solar energy. See you soon again.